uh, Frederick de Guiz for his next workshop talk on uh, good title, Oriented... Sp oriented uh, this is Fundamental Classes on the uh, Groton Nick Riemann theorem, or correct, I mean vi this course, but uh, the general series is characteristic classes. Characteristic classes, thank you. Thanks, Mark. So, <coughs> okay, so uh, in the preceding courses, we have seen that all the classical construction of stable homotopy categories uh, can be done in uh, motivic stable homotopy. So there, there are some differences, but uh, everything works. So, but one one important uh, uh, property that we have construction that we have not seen is that of transfers. So Baker Gottlieb transfers in the classical case, but also uh, in the motivic homotopy case, uh, the, the degree the degree map that we have seen for for quadratic uh, for Chovit groups. So the subject of today will be to, to build this, uh, to show how we can build these classes in motivic homotopy, uh, these uh, functorial maps in, uh, in motivic homotopy theory. So um, this is based on, on uh, uh, so there are several constructions and you can do it uh, by, by hand, but now what we have this uh, six functor formalism in, in, in stable motivic homotopy theory, it, it's much more, uh, Powerful, let's say. So the six functor formalism was invented, as you know, probably by uh, by Gotendik. Uh, first mention, I think, is uh, in his uh, 58 ICM talk, and it was about incoherent cohomology. The goal was to build uh, uh, dualiz dualizing complexes, and of course, the duality is uh, is is completely uh, um, hidden or is at the heart of this uh, Gizin maps, uh, also, which can be. In some sense, Gizin maps are dual to the <coughs> usual functoriality maps, if you want. So I, I'd, I'd like to start by uh, giving you some recall about this uh, uh, six functor formalism because it will be very useful for for a construction. So <coughs> uh, before that, I, I, I just want to come back again to this notion of Tom spaces and, and uh, Tom spaces of a virtual vector bundle. So uh, we have seen the geomorphism and, so, and things like that, but let's say the following. So there exists a map which I will let some of S. So S is again a base scheme, uh, which goes from, so I will denote it like that, K underline of S. So this is the, the the, 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 the category of the uh, Dolin's category of virtual vector bundles. It's actually the zero truncation uh, of, uh, of Quillen K, K, group, K, K spectrum. And it goes to, uh, let's say, SH of S. Or, yeah. And it sends uh, a class of a vector bundle to the Tom space. Okay, and uh, so uh, I just want to mention that uh, so you can get this this uh, functor by by uh, as an infinity functor actually you can extend it uh, uh, f using theoretical uh, way, but there's also a, a very concrete way to to define it, which was due to Ryu I think for the first time, and it goes it it uses the following fact: if you have uh, an exact sequence of vector bundle, so an exact sequence of OS module, vector bundle over S, then the key point is to prove that uh, uh, sigma infinity, there is an isomorphism, sigma infinity of the Tom space of V, well, I should have put this here, sorry, and sigma infinity Tom space of V prime tensor sigma infinity tom space of v double prime, okay? And to get this, uh, so you reduce to the case where the sequence is split, and in this case, the, this, this, this isomorphism is even true, so it's only one equivalence, it's even true unstably, okay? But the, the fact is that this property is only true stably. Okay, <coughs> so now I can set the, this six functor formalism, so this theorem is due to Oyevodsky and Ayub, who actually gave the, Ayub gave the first proof in his PhD. It says the following, so there exists, 
let's say, six functors like this for, for stable homotopy. First, there is a tensor product and internal arm. So there actually, this is three pairs of the joints in form. <coughs> let's say all S, um, let's say true S. And this comes from the fact that this is a presentable mo symmetric monoidal infinity category. For any map from T to S, you get a best change map that we already have used, actually, to SH of T. And then it admits a right adjoint, so I denote it like this, F lower star. So the existence now, the existence of F lower star, it's a derived functor if you want, but, but now from the infinity categorical point of view, it just follows from the, the adjoint, exist, uh, adjoint theorem. Okay, and there is a supplementary map. If P from, let's say, X to S is separated of finite type, I would say uh, S morphism, maybe, sometime. And then there is a pair of adjoint functors, P lower shriek. This is a direct image with compact support. SH of X goes to SH of S, and it admits a right adjoint P upper shriek. So these, these, three, pa these uh, three pair of adjoints are supposed to satisfy several uh, properties. I will just uh, uh, well, uh, well, okay, so proper direct image. I don't know proper. Base change projection formulas and the last one, the localization property. So I won't give a detail here because otherwise it would be too long. But, but in some sense, it's as if, so it's as if, you know, you, we had a cohomology in the infinity categorical sense, so there are pullbacks. There's also, the, we also have some direct image here. And, and when, once you have the, in, in mind the, the properties of, a, of a usual, of these two, two functoriality, the compatibility properties, then you get, and we also have a product. For, and we can uh, guess the, what are the axiom, the, this, uh, this property here. But I will. I, I want to add another another one. It's the smooth purity or relative purity. It says as following: If P is smooth with tangent bundle in this uh, tangent bundle T P, uh, let's say X from S. P is over X, then there exists an isomorphism of functor P upper shriek tensor the tom space of TP tensor P upper star. Okay, and I want to stress that uh, in this in this setting, there is also a dual formula, which says that uh, <coughs> P upper shriek is isomorphic to a functor P lower sharp, ton minus P tensor, blah, blah. So this functor here is uh, actually the right adjoint of P upper star, which exists only in the case P is smooth. Uh, uh, and it, 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 it's, uh, it comes directly from the construction of the stable homotopy category because we use the smooth site. So it's, it exists formally. Okay, so we are, we, we are going to use this, uh, this property. And here, look, I'm, I'm, I'm really using this, uh, this extension of the Tom, Tom functor. Okay, it's minus uh, the inverse of TP. Okay, so just a remarks. This, this, this uh, formalism is very powerful. So there is uh, some uh, habit to use for, for use it. So for example, if X over S is smooth, so we knew that we had this object, sigma infinity of x plus. And in this uh, terminology, it's isomorphic to p lower shriek, p upper shriek of a constant object. 
1 of s. And if you compute it, actually, it's just uh, p sharp 1 of x, by the way, just formally. But uh, looking at this formula, so first, once you see that once you have this uh, six functor formalism, you can extend, uh, give a definition of this object for uh, x eventually singular, separate of finite type. And also, you see that this object is actually some, something like a homology. So it corresponds to, for example, uh, Vyvetsky's homology motifs. OK, there's also another thing to remember. If we have a closed immersion from z to s, then we also add this object, sigma infinity of x, uh, x minus xz. Sorry, so x, xz. OK, <coughs> here we have p. Then this object is actually isomorphic to p low char, shri, sharp, sorry, y lower star of constant object, OK? And, and this, this, this uh, isomorphism just comes from the localization property. OK, so you can express all of the usual geometric objects that we were considering in terms of these six functors. <coughs> and, and I must say that it's very, this formalism is very powerful. And for example, when x is smooth and projective, or proper, actually, you can show that this object here, or this one, uh, is, is uh, rigid. And uh, we can also compute the, its strong dual explicitly. This will be, this is an exercise for the TS station. OK. <coughs> OK, so next, I want to use this, uh, <coughs> this formalism to define a new theory at outside of a <coughs> ring spectrum. Let's say E, e is a ring. Okay. Spectrum. Okay. Uh, the, uh, here in this first part, I won't take any. I want you consider any orientation, and it will be actually useful for the fourth course. So I can define the so-called uh, bivariant theory. <coughs> bivariant, or another name is Borel-Moore homology or with coefficient in E, let's say E homology of uh, let's say y over of a, a morphism y x s morphism so <coughs> p by just letting may, maybe I'll just take x to s for the moment by defining it and e and x s and I want also to so n is an integer and I will consider a virtual vector bundle over x like this I define this kind of relative homology so it's the real homology of a, of, a, of a morphism p to x as just the homotopy classes of map from one uh, from the term space of the shifted n times with coefficient in uh, p upper shriek of e. OK. <coughs> so these, these theories uh, will come to be very useful. <coughs> so what did I plan? OK, first example, and then I will give a uh, properties for this theory. Example of this. So why, why do I call, call it a Borel homology theory? <coughs> if you take uh, E to be the ring spectrum which corresponds to, which represents Betic homology for varieties or a field with a complex embedding, then uh, what you get is that E and Borel mu uh, this of x over k, when x over k is finite type, is actually isomorphic to the borel moore homology of x, c, coefficient in z. And so actually you can see that th this object here is the dualizing uh, complex in this context. Okay, but you have also other example. <coughs> which are useful. So for example, you can 
<coughs> K prime theory. Sorry? Uh, uh, well, if you put a virtual vector bundle, that this theory won't depend on it. Then we will see that uh, in the <laughs> in the second part because this theory is oriented actually. <coughs> okay, so I just mentioned this so you can work out that K prime far theory is a, is a, is an example. So you you can I let you work out this example more directly, and then there's also. A you can consider y from z to s a closed immersion. Then what you will get is that the bi this bivariant homology of z over s, let's be uh, the vector bundle over, over z, will be actually the same thing as the cohomology in degree minus n of s with support in z, in, m, in s. And with this uh, twist, uh, maybe this minus v if you mean. <coughs> okay, the moral is that uh, uh, in general, so. Okay, so bivariant cohomology, bivariant homology is a, is, a, is a generalization of this cohomology with support. And also a trivial remark is that if, you k if, you, if z is actually equal to, to s, or if you consider this, so you can. You can uh, do it like this, okay. V, then this is actually the cohomology in degree M of S minus V if I, uh, <coughs> okay. So a particular case of, of bivariant homo homology is really cohomology, okay. It's not an isomorphism, it's just a tautology. By the way, you can also, okay, so maybe, <coughs> What are the properties? So, because we have this uh, six functor formalism, the, the bivariant cohomologies, homology, sorry, <coughs> satisfies good property, <coughs> uh, which were actually uh, uh, given by Fulton and McPherson. So, they, Fulton and McPherson actually devised the formalism of. Uh, of, of this bivariant theory, except that they, did, did not, they do not uh, consider twists as we do here. But all, uh, apart for, from this, this is the same uh, kind of thing. So there is a base change. If you have a map f from t to s, remember I can, I can always take e t to the f upper star of e. So I can apply this definition here and, and, uh, uh, and have, have another base than s just by pullback. And then there's a base chain change map, f of a star from Borel Moore homology of x over s, some coefficient, uh, maybe I can, and it goes to Borel Moore homology x t over t, and you take also the pullback. Okay. This theory is a uh, uh, covariant with respect to proper map, so f from y to x proper, there is a map, f lower star, from the variant, variant homology of y over s. Now here you have to put f minus 1v, so it's not any, any twist on the source, and you go to the variant homology of x over s v. Okay. There is also et al contravariance, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't state it. There is a very important property, it's a product. So if you have, let's say, x, y, x, and s, two s morphisms, then you get a product e, n, y, x, comma, some w, tensor e, n, x over s, tensor from v, and it goes to e n plus m y over s, and here what you have is the w plus the pullback of, uh, let's call it v, f, plus the pullback of v. Ah, sorry, is it readable? <coughs> 
it okay? Sorry to have written here. <coughs> okay, so this product is very general. So of course, if you take y equal a x equal s, this is just uh, you will you will come back just to the to the usual cup problem in cohomology given this uh, trivial identification. But in general, this is a kind of a, a cap product, a generalization of a cap product. For example, if you take x equal s here, then you will get an action of, a, of this bivariant theory to the, co the on the this cohomology. Well, the other way, you will get an action of a cohomology of x on this uh, bivariant homology, which is actually a kind a kind of cup product. Okay. And, and of course, these, uh, these properties satisfy the good axioms. It's, it's uh, compatibility with product. There is some uh, projection formula and also a best change formula, projection formula for this product here. Okay. <coughs> so it's a kind of very general tool, which was uh, just divided by uh, Fulton and McPherson and in their, uh, in their paper called, I think, categorical uh, Framework. I'm, I'm not sure of the title. Sorry. <coughs> and maybe just a remark, which might be useful. So we can define a kind of uh, universal bivariant theory X S P as just the bivariant theory associated with the unit. So it's, let me write it again, term V, M, and it's F upper shriek of 1S. <coughs> okay, and this theory is uh, universal in all, all this, this stuff. So because if we have E a ring spectrum, you will always, uh, not E spectrum, you will always have a map HN A1 XS V, to this bivariant theory of, and this map is just uh, is just induced by the unit of the uh, ring spectrum the, the, it, this pro this map is uh, formally compatible with all this property and you can say that this is a kind of a generalized regulator if you want generalized sorry regulator map In the sense of Be in the sense of Bellinson, so actually, if we were working with motifs instead of so of a, a motivic spectra, then uh, here we would would have the borel moore motivic homology, and and this would j really be some kind of a regulator map. The important point is that uh, so we in a minute we will construct classes here, and and the important point to remember is that actually they come from a classes a class here. So all what I am going to say could be done on only in this uh, formalism here, in this category. Okay, so now fundamental class. So this is a work in which, was, which I, I did with, in collaboration with uh, Tang Zujin and uh, Adil Khan. So let me remind, me, remind you first that uh, we say that a map from X to S is smoothable LCI or it, the, the name could be a globally, LC, uh, globally complete intersection, uh, if it admits a factorization x, p, s, so this is p, this is i, such that this map is smooth, and this map is a regular closed dimension. So uh, one would like to be able only to consider LCI ma maps made, but it seems to be difficult. There are some problem with gluing. Okay, when you have this, you can define the virtual tangent bundle of this F, two of F. It will be the, the, the element in the, the category of vect virtual vector bundle on X, obtained as the normal, uh, sorry, this is minus the normal bundle of I uh, plus the pullback of the tangent bundle of P. Okay. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. Actually, you can see that this virtual bundle is uh, is the is the virtual bundle associated with the cotangent complex uh, of this morphism, if you want. But uh, in this re restricted uh, geometrical context, we don't really need uh, cotangent complexes. Something important to remember from this theory is that. Uh, <coughs> is that if you have a uh, map y goes to x goes to s f g h these are all smoothable lci maps then there is an identity between the virtual tangent bundle of h and that of g plus g minus 1 the virtual tangent bundle of f okay so the main theorem <coughs> for us, I will just get the proof. <coughs> so this is from the gene Adilcam of myself, is that there exist uh, classes, eta f bar, uh, which lives in the bivalent theory in degree zero, actually, of x over s from uh, term of f for f from x to s a smoothable lci morphism and uh, the collection of all these classes satisfy the, uh, this pro the following properties i will only state the main one first of all there is a kind of normalization that one could expect eta identity is actually the, <coughs> the unit of the ring spectrum second there is a uh, um, Compatibility with transversal pullback. <coughs> Base change with respect to transversal so pullbacks. And the last property, which is the most important, in that in this. Uh, in this context, for one, you have a uh, following inequality. The fundamental class of H is equal to the fundamental class of G times the fundamental class of F. Okay? And to compute this, you, are, you, you just use this, uh, this product here and this uh, identity to, to get the correct twist. Okay? That will be a consequence of this in a minute. So uh, a priori, what we know from scratch is that uh, you have pullback for etal maps without twist. <coughs> but and then what you do is that you co you build this uh, this fundamental class, and out of this, maybe I I'll do it now. <coughs> so out of this fundamental class, you get exactly what we wanted. Ah, uh, okay, base change maybe. Uh, so you have x to s and the map t. So this is f, which is a suitable LCI. You have p, and you consider a pullback, let's say y, q, g. So p is transversal. Transversal to f if uh, the map g is uh, lci it will be it will always be uh, smoothable anyway and the canonical map from the virtual tangent bundle of g to q minus one virtual tangent bundle of f is an isomorphism okay and then now when you have a uh, you have this map, uh, the first map here. So yes, it could be, it should be P, okay? And then you have P, P up a star of a fundamental class of F is uh, the fundamental class of G. And actually the, the, uh, 
because of this, the twist match. Okay. Of course, there's, there's an, another formula in two. Uh, you can you can you can uh, assume that this is. You can suppose that G is LCI, but this is an not a, this is not an isomorphism. Then there will be an excess intersection bundle, and you'll get here. You have to correct the formula. You have to multiply by uh, the Euler class of the excess uh, intersection. But I don't. I I, I won't uh, state this. Okay. <coughs> so just just uh, before giving you some details about this construction, uh, the point is that out of this. Uh, fundamental class, you directly get uh, <coughs> pullback map. So let's say y2x over s is suitable LCI. And these, these scheme y and x are separated of finite type over s. Then you get a map f, let's say, upper shriek from the uh, a, n bivariant theory of x over s. So here you have to put, yes, just b. And it goes to e n of y x uh, pullback of v plus tangent bundle of f. What is it? It's just, uh, to sum up alpha, it's just the product. So it's eta bar f times alpha. OK. <coughs> there are also some circumstances uh, which implies that this map is, uh, is an isomorphism. So it's, and, and then you get some duality uh, formula. But I, I won't enter into the details here. So now for the proof. Well, uh, if, if you have ever considered this kind of morphism, so this kind of con the construction of this kind of morphism, you, will, you know that uh, uh, the proofs are always the same. So because I have this factorization here, I can consider two cases, the case where p, case where f equal p is smooth. And then you get eta bar p out of a purity, a smooth purity isomorphism. So uh, this fundamental class was uh, already in the in the six functor formalism. And then what you have to consider is a case where f equal to i is a closed immersion from x. In that case, we just take uh, again the, <coughs> the method of uh, Fulton, which actually was a, a method of Verdier, because he, uh, these kinds of classes were already uh, considered by Verdier in uh, analytic geometry, actually. And you one uses the deformation space, so let's d be the blow up of z times 0 in a1 cross x. You can take this space if you want, but usually I, I look at the affine, affine version, so, so I, I subtract the blow up of z in x. So this is a, a, an, this is a space with, which is a <coughs> fibered over a1. OK, the fiber over gm is just because then there's no, we have not uh, blown, blown up anything, is just uh, gm cross x. And the fiber over 0, so because of this definition, it's just a normal bundle. It's just n, the normal bundle of uh, z inside x. OK, uh, of course, in this case, i is regular, right, by the way. So the normal cone is just a normal bundle. OK, and what you do is just that you use the some version. The formula is very simple. So we start from the homology of x over x. We take a pullback to x bar or x cross gm. <coughs> so, so just pull back. Uh, wait. Uh, wait. Okay. 
think I'm missing some twists. Ah, that's it. Actually, no. Uh, it's not the pullback. It's uh, so here I don't put any twist. Zero. And then I have a multiplication by this, this class T where I have taken GM to be spec D T T minus one. Okay. And if I do that, I go in, so let's say I start from zero. I go to E minus one actually, GM plus X over X, still zero. And then uh, uh, something that I did not say is that uh, uh, because you have this covariance, borel uh, this bivariant theory is, is also satisfy a localization on the exact sequence. And so you can look at the, the immersion of a zero fiber of a deformation space into the deformation space, and it will give you a residue, residue map going to uh, now, because it's a residue, it, it raises degree by one. It goes to the bivariant homology of a closed, uh, closed, closed uh, subscheme. So it's n over x comma zero. But then now this formally is isomorphic to E of z over x comma minus the normal one. Okay. So now you take one here, the unit of a ring spectrum, and you map it here, and you get the, this fundamental class. Another way of saying that, if you want, is this formula. It's the residue of the class T, but this is with a <coughs> bracket. Yeah. Yeah, actually, what you so this map here, eta bar i, is a map from the term space of minus n to y upper shriek of uh, E of x. So maybe, is it? No, I'm saying if you wanted to define the pullback by i. Ah, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Do it just by the same function. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, as you see, so this fundamental class implies a pullback map, and 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 uh, in this process you can recognize uh, how Fulton defined pullback on Chow groups. Actually, and this the same construction was done by Ross for cycle modules, uh, uh, and here it's a, it's a, a thing that we we take, but in this uh, inside this categorical framework, and I must say, uh, <coughs> but you get something interesting out of this, is that not only you have constructed the uh, pullback on homology, but you have also considered these uh, Giesin maps that we wanted, these transfer maps. So let's assume now that, uh, okay, so the end of the proof is, the, so you have these two classes, now you have to glue them uh, in order that the, the uh, proposition three is, uh, is, uh, is stated. And then, so you check this. This is another, this is why, why when the, the, the work begins actually. But <coughs> let me state another thing now. If f from x to s is uh, smoothable, not smooth, smoothable, LCI and proper, for example, you usually you take that projective and LCI, so it's far from being smooth, then you get a map f lower shriek in cohomology. So it goes from, uh, let me write E m m of x to e uh, well it will be n m x but with some uh, <coughs> twist added term of f so the construction is this so you have a class alpha here and you map it to uh, Sorry, it's S, F lower star of alpha times the fundamental class of F. So 
so you have to okay maybe i should say this e m m s to f is homotopy classes of a map of one s comma e s twisted m times shifted n times tensor the term space of two f uh, okay so uh, usually it's a bit redundant to consider this twist here and this twist here but uh, it's just for for making this more <coughs> more consistent the fact is that in this uh, in this term space here there is actually a degree the degree of uh, you, we will see that in a, in a minute uh, the, the dimension of f appears as a shift inside this okay so the good thing with these uh, uh, fundamental classes is that once we uh, once we have defined them then we not only have defined the pullback on homology but also the push forward in uh, in cohomology and actually you also define the push forward for any map in cohomology with compact support and things like that okay so these are our given maps actually the first version and here the funny thing is that you see we have we have not uh, used any uh, uh, sorry i think i'm i put something wrong i uh, sorry it's here F trick, it's here. It's the, uh, the, 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 the proper push forward in bivariant homology, which exists formally. <coughs> and sorry, I, I put the twist in the correct, in the incorrect. Yeah. X, and here we have something like this. One. Can put sigma infinity x plus. Okay, sorry, but the term space lives uh, on, on x, not on s. And this is why why uh, these these, uh, these Gizin maps are, are 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 special. You cannot you cannot always uh, you cannot take the cohomology of x and gives uh, the, and, uh, and obtain these maps. It has to be twisted by uh, the term space here, like in like, like we have seen for example in Chovy groups maybe. <coughs> okay. Absolutely, this is the uh, case. Uh, uh, there is some trick here, so. We use this product on bivariant homology. We identify this with the bivariant homology of x over x, multiply by this class, so it lives in the bivariant homology of x over s, and then we forget that we are uh, uh, over s, and we go to the bivariant homology of s over s. So, if if we were working with uh, i a closed immersion, then we were doing we we will work with uh, homology with support, and so uh, all this is um, much more uh, usual. Okay, so I won't give examples of this uh, construction. So, apart from these two two maps here, and I want to pass now to the to the case of oriented cohomology. Now, assume that E C is an oriented motivic spectrum. So remember, we had this. Uh, 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 we had this term isomorphism. So recall, out of the orientation T, we could build a class term of V inside the cohomology 2RR of a term space of V. Okay, for V over X plus a vector bundle of rank R. And actually, the multiplication by this, this class induces an isomorphism between the cohomology of a term space and the cohomology of a base. Uh, but actually, there are two things that we can do. First, we can extend this construction to the virtual vector bundle. So if V is now a vector 
virtual vector bundle over x, you can find there exists a class term v inside the same thing, e to r r. But now I use this new term space, which lives only in the stable homotopy category. OK. <coughs> Such that. Uh, this map alpha associate alpha term term class of v is an isomorphism okay so this comes from the main the main point is that uh, the term class of uh, v plus v prime is can be identified say with the term class of v tensor the term class of v prime and then you use this, this splitting property to get uh, the class of virtual vector bundle. OK. And now, once you have this isomorphism, actually, you can extend it to bivariant, to bivariant case. And moreover, say, moreover. <coughs> You get a bivariant isomorphism in, uh, in borel moore homology. So let's say, for me, it would be only this E0 uh, x over s comma v going to okay, E to r r of x over s, but without twist, <coughs> which to an element alpha associate, uh, so it's term class minus v times alpha using, again, the, the product that I, I defined earlier, but uh, <coughs> with twist, then this is an isomorphism. This is an isomorphism. So I said, uh, I said, I said before in the case of uh, the, the Betico homology and the borel moore homology, uh, what you get out of this, this thing is that uh, for, bio, for, for uh, in the oriented case, the twist here does not really matter. There is a way to trivialize them uh, canonically. But, but uh, remember that this is not done uh, uh, randomly. It's done by some explicit class. OK, so now what do we get? <coughs> we have f from x to s. A smoothable LCI map. Then we can define the fundamental class with, without twist. So we define eta IC in this group E. So, uh, sorry, eta F. Assume that F is of a relative dimension D, which is, by the way, the rank of uh, this virtual tangent bundle. Then we get a class in the borel moore homology E to D, D of X over S. So I will put a bar. And it's just obtained by this. Uh, we take the, the fundamental class with twist, and we apply this, uh, this term isomorphism here. So the formula reads like this. It's the term class of minus the tangent bundle of S, F times the fundamental class that I defined earlier. OK? So now you see that it, it looks more like uh, we wanted for this case, because we, are, we, we start to get twists. And in particular, the good thing now is that for having a push forward in cohomology, for example, we don't need uh, to consider twist maps. So if f is, in addition, proper. this, then you get the push forward that you get using this class here will we'll give you a map from uh, cohomology of x to a cohomology, but this time it's plus 2d, plus d, and it's OK, of s. And the formula is the, is the same. So to alpha, you associate something like f upper store of alpha times this fundamental class, OK? 
So just uh, just so <coughs> just some example to give you a, a sense of what these classes are. So actually, they should be called refined fundamental classes. For example, if you take y from z to s, uh, the class that you get eta i c will be will live in so it's say it's a co-dimension n, so regular closed, uh, it, it will leave e minus to the n minus n of z over s without twist. And as I said, it's just a cohomology of s with support in z. OK? So uh, if you use. So this is a refined fundamental class. You can forget the support if you want. And you can go to E to N, N of S. <coughs> forget support. And this will map this class here to something which could be defined like this. And it's just actually the, the image of a unit by this uh, in map here. So it's really the class of, uh, of, uh, of um, the scheme Z inside S. <coughs> so for example, what, what you get is when, when you take E to be the motivic cohomology, where, um, and the in, this, in the case where this is just a uh, chalk groups, then this class will just be the fundamental class of Z inside S. Similarly, in K theory, you will get uh, the class of uh, OZ. <coughs> and maybe of a formula, which are more interesting. <coughs> Let's take E, pull NGL, and look at X, XK, uh, proper LCI, characteristic of K is zero. <coughs> then you have this class, uh, uh, eta rf, take the canonical orientation on MGL, and, and it will live in uh, some, it will live in the Borel Mu version in degree 2D, I think, of x. And it's actually, uh, at least in the case smooth and proper, it's actually the, the, the class, the cobordism class of X. Once you have identified cobordism of MGL in degree 2 DD, uh, I mean, bivariant uh, theory of MGL with uh, uh, moral Levin cobordism. And so the, the class here corresponds to the cobordism class. So the fundamental class I, 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 we, we define here just glue. Uh, fundamental class of cycles and fundamental class of cobordism, which is uh, obviously important in this uh, area. Okay, so I don't have much time for <coughs> the rest of the talk, but still. Okay. So now we have our push forward map or integration when in this terminology of Panin for oriented cohomology and, and I just want to tell you how we can uh, we can get a uh, Grotten Krimanhoff theorem for this uh, this map. So how does it how does it come? So we like we look at some morphism of ring spectra, motivic ring spectra. And we assume that each of these ring, ring spectra admits an orientation. Assume that C, D are respective orientations on E and F. Okay, so this map, uh, morphism of ring spectra, of course it induces a map in cohomology from the cohomology of E to the cohomology of F. It's compatible with product. And you can look now at the cohomology of P infinity. Oh, let's remember goes to the cohomology of P infinity of S. Of course, from the 
projective bundle formula because we have orientations here. We know that this is the same thing as the cohomology of S, bracket C, where C is the orientation. And here, same thing, cohomology of F, S, bracket T, uh, D, sorry. Okay. So what we get is that phi lower star of C is a power series in, power series in D. But uh, uh, actually, uh, we see that the condition of being an orientation is it's, it's compatible by because this is a ring map. So phi lower T is actually an orientation on F. But it's not the same orientation as D. So it can be actually expressed as a power, formal power series, let's say theta of D, such that theta belong in F star. Let's introduce a formal variable T just for clarity. Um, theta of D is of a form uh, zero plus one times T plus some coefficient, okay? <coughs> uh, actually, what you can check as in a classical case is that <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. So uh, uh, you, you know that C restricted to P1 is equal to one. And this is because phi lower star is compatible with pullback and product. So it, uh, it implies that uh, this is zero, there's no constant part, and this is one here. Okay, so in other words, if you, <laughs> actually there's a lemma, what you get is that this power theory theta of T is an isomorphism, a strict isomorphism between, so let's say, a formal group law associated to C base change to uh, F lower star of S, XY, and a formal group law of D, XY. Okay, so each time you have a, a morphism of ring spectrum, it, it gives you a morphism of a formal group law. Uh, the example is a churn character. It's an isomorphism from KGLS tensor Q with the sum of Y in Z of these motivic cohomology groups I to I. And it corresponds in, uh, in uh, if you look at degree, oops, at degree zero, zero, it corresponds to the map K0S, let's assume S regular, K0S tensor Q going to the char group of S tensor Q. So it really corresponds to the usual uh, churn character. And what you can see in this case is that uh, the isomorphism of formal group law, so in we know that this has a multiplicative formal group law. This has the additive formal group law. So this, this, this power series is a unique isomorphism from the multiplicative to the, to the additive one. It's the so-called exponential, uh, and it's given by the exponential uh, power series. Okay, so <laughs> I have two minutes to finish this Grothendieck uh, uh, Riemann Hoff formula. So <coughs> You see that, uh, uh, so the effect of this morphism is that it changed the, the orientation on F lower star. And, and this can be, so you can, you can more, you can find the behavior of phi with respect to, to higher churn classes with this. So there's the lemma. There exists a third class morphism phi, which goes from, uh, let's say, K0 of x to F0, 0, 0 of x multiply. So this, this is F0, 0 of x is a ring, and you can take the multiplicative element, and uh, it's characterized by oops, the following property uh, compatible with pullbacks. 
and such that for any line bundle L of X, line bundle, uh, the cut class phi of L, the class of L is given by this, uh, by a formula given by this power series, and it's the thing that you have to take is theta over theta of t, and then you sub substitute t equal d1 of l. Okay. This uh, this dot class has the following normalization property for any v of the x vector bundle. Uh, the top the Euler class of v. I'm sorry. The top churn class of v. <coughs> When you apply phi, it will become something in terms of dn of v, and it's the tot class phi, uh, the inverse tot class v associated with uh, this v times the churn class of v, but with respect to the orientation. Okay. So this tot class is uh, is the is the thing that will tell you how the churn class is. Uh, uh, BF with respect to phi. Okay, and to finish, I think I'm over time now. <coughs> to finish with this uh, Grotten Nikrimanov formula, we have the following theorem. <coughs> so let's take S from X to S, the smoothable LCI morphism. Then uh, the map phi induces a map in bivariant uh, homology. And so you can apply to it, uh, you can apply it to the fundamental class of F, but with respect to the orientation on, on E. And it will give you a following. It's the tot class respect to phi of a virtual tangent bundle of F times this virtual fundamental class, but with respect to D. Okay. So this, uh, this formula uh, uh, actually implies all, uh, all the grotten kriemann roch formula that you want. Uh, of course, for example, for the proper push forward, because it, it, the Giesin map is just defined by multiplication by one of this class. You will get exactly the, the formula uh, first, first proved by grotten -Dick. And you also get formulas for F upper shriek. Okay, so I think I will stop there because I was already too long, sorry. much. Are there any questions? <laughs>